hot soup on a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary. Over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, my nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. To some visitor I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. Now distinctly I remember it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrote its lost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished for morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow. From my books a cease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden, whom the angels name Lenore, nameless here forevermore. The silken satin, the thin rustling of each purple curtain, thrilled me, thrilled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. So that now, to still the beating of my heart, I'm still repeating. To some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. Some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. This it is and nothing more. Presently my soul grows stronger, hesitating and no longer. So said I, O maiden, truly your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is I was napping, so gently you came rapping. And so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door. But I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door. Darkness there, nothing more. Deep into that darkness, peering long, I stood there wandering, fearing. Knocking, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the stillness gave no token. And the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore. As I whispered, and then I commanded back the word, Lenore. Merely this and nothing more. Back into the chamber, turning all my soul within me, burning. So again I heard a tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely there is something at my window lattice. Let me see, then, what there is in this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment in this mystery explore. Tis the wind and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, when with many a flirt and flutter. And in step the stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least of business made he not a minute stop the steady. But with mine of Lord, a lady perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace just above my chamber door, perched and said nothing more. Then the sir bonny bride beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, by the brave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore. Though the crest be shorn and shaven, no, I said, out sure no craven. Yes, the grim and ancient raven wandering from the night ashore. Tell me what the Lord in name is on the night's plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Much I marvel this ungainly fall to hear discourse so plainly, though it sense the little meaning, a little relevancy bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast upon the sculptured bust above his chamber door, if such name is nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely in the place it bust, spoke only. That one word does of his saw, in that one word he did outpour. Nothing further than he uttered, not a fever than he footed, till I scarcely more than muttered other friends have flown before. And the morrow he will leave me as my hopes have flown before. And the bird said, Nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by replace, so oddly spoken, countless said I what it utters is its only stock in store. Caught from some unhappy master, whom unmerciful disaster, Followed fast and followed faster till his songs one burden bore, till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore, of never and never more. But the raven still beguiling all my fancy into smiling, stride I will a cushion seat in front of bird and bust and door, then up on the velvet sinking I betook myself to linking, fancy unto fancy thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim ungainly ghastly gaunt. An ominous bird of yore, meanting croaking nevermore. This I sat engaged in gussing, but no syllable expressing, to the four whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining with my head at ease reclining, on the cushion's velvet lining at the lamplight gloated o'er. But whose velvet violet lining with the lamplight gloating o'er, she shall press, and nevermore. Then methought the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer, sung by seraphim whose thought falls tinkle on the tufted floor. 
Grant shall cry, the God of plenty, by these angels he hath sent thee, respite, respite, and the pen from the memories of Lenore. Quaff or quaff this kind of pence and forget this lost Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet said, thing of evil, prophet still with bird of devil, what a tempest sent, or what a tempest tossed the hair ashore, this a lake yet all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me Troy, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead, tell me, tell me, I implore, quote the raven nevermore, prophet said, thing of evil, prophet still, a bird of evil, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore. Tell us all the sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden, a shawl clasped with sainted maiden, whom the angels name Lenore. Clasped a rare and radiant maiden, whom the angels name Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. May that word our sign of parting bird of fiend, I shrieked at starting. Get thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie they saw and spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken, with the bust above my door. Take the beat from out my heart and take the form from off my door. Quoth the raven nevermore. And the raven never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting. On a pallid bust of powers just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming. And the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore.